is only very rarely that history produces visionaries that remain etched forever in our collective memories. Saint Kuriakos Elias Chabra belonged to this breed. His footprints on the sand of time is phenomenal, for his towering spiritual life illuminates the cellulites of our minds. Saint Kuriakos Elias Chabra was born on 10th February 1805 in a small district of Alpi. He was the epitome of spirituality and peace. He was engaged in various spiritual and welfare activities. He is the founder of the Congregation of Mother of Carmel CMC for women and Carmelites of Mary Immaculate CMI for men. He is known for his sacrificial life and continues to be a model for spiritual faith. As we celebrate the 216th birth anniversary of St. Kuriakos Elias Chavra, we the Association of Christian Christites, Delhi and Sia campus welcome Dr. Father Vijay B. Devasi, Dean and Director of Christ Deemed to Be University, Delhi NCR as our speaker. He is the member of the CMI congregation. He joined the congregation in 1989 and was ordained as priest in 2006. He has served as an academician for more than a decade and has specialized in the field of psychology. Welcome Father. Uh, thank you Prezi for the nice words of introduction. Uh, and I am glad and uh, feel honored and also feel privileged to reflect together on the life and the influence of uh, St. Chavra. Uh, thank you very much for you know, coming up with this idea and then giving me this chance to you know, talk to you or maybe, maybe reflect together on the life and the uh, you know, vision of St. Chavra. The life of St. Kuryakos Elias Chavra had been instrumental in initiating various social reforms. So according to you, Father, what are the key elementary contributions by St. Chavra? Yeah, uh, he has done a lot of contribution to the society. To me, his vision of empowerment and especially empowerment through education was his greatest contribution, I believe. All that he did, including uh, the establishment of uh, the monasteries, the convents, which means the, the CMI congregation and the CMC congregation, was meant for empowerment of people. His greatest contribution is in the field of education. And you know the society at his time was divided by caste, creed, and uh, the economic status as well. Uh, untouchability was very rampant at that point of time, and the poor were suppressed. And at that point of time, he wanted to empower especially people who were poor, who were you know, challenged by the upper caste uh, society. Uh, through education, he wanted to empower them. So what he did was, you know, somewhere in 1861, as far as I remember, he ordered that all parishes or churches should have a school attached to it. And the very purpose of establishing school with parish or the church was to empower people. And he also knew he could not just roll out the vision of education by just establishing few churches and parishes and schools. So what he did was he introduced the midday meal system. He knew these, knew these poor you know, children could not afford to sit in the school and study and not help their you know, family to earn a livelihood. So he introduced this midday meal so that they are able to at least support themselves for one meal. Uh, and he also, you know, uh, involved people participation in this. So people's participation is another aspect of his uh, you know, empowerment of the society. So I'm quite fascinated uh, with his contribution uh, to the society through education. As I already told you, the establishment of monasteries and the convents was also meant for the empowerment and that through education. In uh, uh, 1866, he, uh, along with uh, the, the, the Italian missionary, Father Leopold, he started uh, the first convent, indigenous convent, uh, in, in the whole of our country. And today we uh, know this congregation, this community, a CMC's uh, congregation of Mother Carmel. So that was also for the empowerment of women. Today we speak a lot about empowerment of women, uh, in all our educational as well as 
uh, you know, social sector. But he visualized this in, in the mid of uh, 19th century. And his contribution uh, to the empowerment of women is also very, very, very significant. Um, uh, his other social contribution, as I told you, was, you know, getting people participation. So whatever mission, ministries he did, he wanted people to also involve. To me, this is also a model, sustaining model, you see, he, even when, you know, he is uh, not uh, uh, there in the picture, well, these people take up this mission and continue. So that becomes a sort of sustainable mission. I think uh, uh, this is what I would like to, uh, you know, tell you about his you know, elementary, you know, inf uh, the reforms that he uh, uh, initiated in the, in the uh, church and in the society. Uh, especially of Kerala. Father, you have been in the field of education for more than a decade in various capacities. How did Saint Chavra influence you in your life? Well, uh, I'm really glad to speak about the influence he has on me uh, today and from my early childhood as well. When I was a student of the ninth grade uh, in a school run by the Franciscan sisters, well, two of us, in, in fact, went to the class in the afternoon and went to meet a priest who was a CMI in the nearby monastery of our school. And the priest gave us, you know, the, the short biography of St. Chandra. I remember one of the uh, biographies that I read first was of St. Chandra and obviously of St. Alfonso, two saints of our nation. From those days, well, I was influenced uh, gradually to the CMI community and obviously its founder, Saint Priya Prasadas Chavra. When I reflect about the influence that he has on me, well, I could think it in terms of uh, one, my own personal religious journey, religious life, and secondly, his influence in my work life. When I talk about my personal life, well, to me, he is a saint who was very humane, who had great vision, planning, and a saint with fairness. And his self-awareness and God-awareness, if I put it that way, was two unique, were two unique uh, you know, uh, aspects of his spirituality. Self-awareness, where he realizes himself uh, as a weak human being, as a sinful human being, uh, at the same time, you know, realization that God is full of mercy, abundant mercy, and his sinfulness, slightness, in a way, cancels out in the presence of God's mercy and compassion. So his self-awareness and awareness of God combines, both combine, combine together to give him a unique type of spirituality. So you would find him in his uh, writings, in his meditation. Uh, he speaks very low about himself. Uh, it's not uh, just purely a sort of humility, but it's, it's more, it comes you know, from his awareness of God's abundant mercy, his holiness, his compassion when he is near to the holiness of God. So it becomes part of, you know, uh, my spirituality has already become a part of my spirituality. Well, in a little humble way, I just think. Secondly, his uh, life has influenced me in my workplace. Most importantly, his passion. So in, when he lived, uh, there were, he had a lot of, uh, you know, uh, difficulties. Well, we didn't have uh, the, the communication system that we have. We didn't, we didn't have the transportation system that we have had. But then he, he, you know, he passionately, you know, focused on his mission and he established eight, eight monasteries, obviously the establishment of schools, the press, and so many other endeavors. Well, I think it was basically because of his passion, strong passion. And he sustained his passion even in his illness. That is what, again, you know, uh, influenced me in terms of my personal uh, workplace, you know, uh, life. And I tried to combine, you know, the, 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 his spirituality and his uh, passion, 
his vision into you know my own personal life in a simple humble way and i feel you know the cmis wherever we start our uh, institutions i see all of them flourishing because i feel this is the vision and mission of uh, uh, our founder that we are trying to you know continue uh, to me personally this campus is also you know full of vibrant grace you know mediated by the intersection of st chandra i would imagine every day him walking through our campus and uh, every morning uh, we you know during the the, the holy eucharist and after the holy eucharist we uh, pray a short novena to st chandra and we ask him you know, to to walk around this campus and guide us through and that's how his influence continues and uh, i really feel his presence his uh, blessings his intercession saint chavra was one of the greatest social reformist and an educationalist and he thought that education was one of the way to transform the ordinary people so how can this vision be relevant today father i think the the socio economic or socio cultural uh, status of the society especially in india is not uh, changed quite a lot from his time to this time uh, even today we uh, have a, a lot of uh, socio economic cultural divide in our society i believe i'm not sure if uh, uh, i'll be correct if i say that it's uh, it, it's in an increasing pace uh, especially in the last few years if you see in our nation uh, the poor becoming poorer and the, the rich becoming richer so the economic divide is very strong in our nation so also socio cultural divide also i feel is growing especially because of the growing fundamentalism you know the the caste system uh, and maybe also because of the fundamentalism the divide between the creeds is also not uh, completely you know gone from our society so uh, in order to ameliorate uh, this condition of our society i still believe uh, saint chavra's vision Uh, of inclusive education is very very important today uh, the sanskrit school that he started in uh, 1846 uh, for mainly for the dalit uh, you know children uh, you know at that point of time uh, uh, the the sanskrit was considered as an elite language and that that was taught only to the upper caste uh, you know uh, children or people Uh, well he wanted everyone to learn this ancient uh, holy language of our nation and that's he felt is one way of uh, you know reducing the divide uh, between the creeds and caste i guess um today we also have this sort of uh, divide so his vision of uh, education especially inclusive education uh, is very very relevant today so if you look at uh, our cmi you know schools and higher education institutions you would find uh, in our institutions students from across the nation uh, uh, from all caste and creed and we always try to you know develop our students holistically uh, we have this inclusive you know policy of education we have uh, schools for you know differently abled we also have uh, centers for you know the 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 for uh, rehabilitation centers for uh, physically disabled we also have schools and higher education institutions where we cater to the lower straight economic status strata of uh, you know the society we give them free education we have also free mid 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 uh, the meal system continued if you see in our university in bangalore but specifically where we have a hotel management department our students themselves you know you know cook uh, you know midday meal for more than 200 students we have also students who are completely supported by you know the the university who whom we give uh, even a, sh- a short small stipend for their uh, uh, daily livelihood so we try to you know reduce this divide and uplift the the, the children from the lower strata of the society and if you look at also the the places we work we work with tribals we work with ngos uh, we work with uh, also people from uh, mid uh, you know level 
uh, economic status from the society. We also cater to the the upper, you know, well of uh, children as well. So our philosophy is when you have uh, students in your class from all these strata of the society, and we when we try to, you know, develop them holistically, uh, we try to develop, you know, we try to reduce basically this uh, divide, economic divide, socio-cultural divide. And if you see also many of our programs has embedded in it the service learning or community service as part of uh, you know the in our curriculum so we are trying to also you know develop this sense of uh, the social contribution sense of society nation building in all our students this is how i feel his vision is uh, is relevant and uh, or we make it relevant uh, today this way Father, according to you, what are the takeaways from the life of St. Chavra for us students? Well, uh, to you students, what I feel uh, the takeaways are mainly the passion with which he, you know, uh, continued his vision and the vision that he had and his policy of uh, inclusivity and openness. Maybe if I say these are four. You know, there are many, but maybe four takeaways for you. When I say his uh, passion, well, uh, I told you some time ago that he was so passionate to empower the society through education and through people's participation, uh, the, the energy you know, through this passion that he had. I think as students, you should also be passionate about what you do. It could be your time that you spend in the, the, the soccer field or volleyball ground or basketball you know, court. The passion with which you need to you know, pursue sports. Well, while in the classroom, the passion to study, learn, that's very important. So whatever you do, this passion you know, gives you a lot of energy to what you want. And I'm sure with passion you are able to accomplish what you want to achieve in life. Secondly, what I would uh, visualize is a vision, sustained vision. Now, again, if you look at, he had a lot of limitations, but his vision, the end, was always in the forefront. And the, the aim to achieve this goal, his vision, uh, was not very easy for him. So there are, again, uh, limitations for us also in terms of our achievement of vision. We have goals, we set goals, and we need to also have uh, implementation inventions to achieve these goals. And there will be a lot of setbacks in between. It could be, you know, a failure, maybe our own sickness. Uh, this is what I found in the life of St. Chandra. When he was confronted with illness, when we had, uh, when we had uh, setbacks in life, he, he was able to bounce back, a lot of resilience. I think it's because of uh, the, the vision, you know, sustained vision that he had. Thirdly, uh, you could take away the inclusive policy you know, that he had, including everybody in the society. Let's not look at you know where someone comes from, what his creed is, what his uh, caste is, or what socio-cultural you know, background he or she comes from. Let's include everybody in, in, in our, our community. So that broad vision of, uh, you know, including everyone, I think that's the magnanimity, generosity that all of us should have. And maybe fourthly, finally, you know, the, the, his, his um, you know, openness, his openness to the new ideas, new learnings, as students, I think this is very, very important for you to be creative, innovative, and open to the new, new learning centers. So we always have to learn, uh, unlearn, and relearn. Uh, as students, as administrators, we need to always, you know, be open to the new ideas, new developments, new strategies that you know come up. Uh, so when we are able to be open, uh, we actually learn. Uh, let's not be, you know, you know, self-complacent at any point of time. Let's be humble enough to be open to the new ideas, new learnings. And I think that will lead to, you know, uh, better, or that will help us to be better achievers in life.
Thank you, Father, for your inspiring thoughts and valuable time. As Father Vijay said, and enlightened us with his words of wisdom, let us also strive to live a divine life and enjoy personal upliftment by the grace of God. Thank you. It is more than a century since Saint Chabra left us. We have moved on. Society has changed a lot. Yet he inspires all those who wants to make this world a better place to live in. For this world needs kindness, love, and compassion from everyone. Let me conclude by one of his quotes: "Let there be no day in your life in which you did no good to others." May God bless us all through the intercession of our founder, Saint Kuriyagos Elias Chabra.